What a privilege to be in Marquette. What a great part of the world you live in. I am so fortunate to have known one of your old dear friends, a fellow named John Volker. We used to go fishing together out at Frenchman's Pond. It, we, he would, he would love a newcomer, and I sure enough gave him that first opportunity when I said, John, do you tie your own flies? And he said, boys, he says, far be it these days for me to tie my own flies. It's all I can do to unzip one. <laughs> we fell in love, and I fell in love with this community, and I'm very fortunate to have my daughter and my grandson living here. And I've, tried, I've been working my way toward the bridge. In, in 2001, we had the privilege of putting two turbines just south of the bridge. Has anyone here seen those? Well, what we, did, what we did there was to try to make a statement about how we make and use energy. What, what is it like to become a community that wants to change the world? We had long debates in, Mar in Mackinac City about what this should look like and whether or not it was going to change the character. But in, now they've got the, the 18th century Fort Mitchell Mackinac, of course the bridge, and this 21st century way to think about how we make and use energy. But what I really want to talk about tonight is communities beyond political borders. Bill Vida did a wonderful job about talking about communities and where you are and who you are and how we think about ourselves juxtaposed across the entire globe. We've had wonderful speakers about art and entrepreneurs and, and beekeeping and people who really, really get it. But I want to tell you a story, a quick story about a little, little place called Gratiot County, which is right in the center of the Lower Peninsula, just east of Alma and north of Ithaca, where uh, the uh, Odysseus ended his odyssey in Ithaca. <laughs> Sometimes I think, think I, <laughs> I, I finish mine there. There was the Smith family. The Smith family is fifth-generation farmers. The average income out in Gratiot County is $22,000, and they've seen their share of crises. They have a place there called St. Louis, and in St. Louis is the Velsico Chemical Company. They invented little, little products like DDT and PBBs. I could go on about all the crises that those caused to our human and ecological welfare. Crises that are, were magnified when Alma tried to save their largest employer, and by the time they had taken this on, the utility there had actually put the utility, that largest employer out of business. So they'd seen a lot of ups and downs, and it's tough enough to be a farmer. These days, they're soybean farmers, they're, uh, of course, sugar beet farmers, and on our listening tour to think about building a wind power project for Gratiot County, the first thing we found out was this is all about cooperatives. Mr. Gujan said so eloquently, cooperatives are ways that people work together for the good of the community, and they all pitch in, and they're all part of this. So we created something called a pooling easement agreement that unlike the three basic business models of building a project of the utility comes in and decides and defends, or what a, a new emerging model of a community-owned project, we created something called a community participation model where we helped to engage the public over time. 256 families signed our pooling easement agreement. We invited everyone from the beginning to become part of the project because we needed to amass 35,000 acres. And about 35,000 acres when you drive that way now, you'll see 133 turbines on only 300 of the 35,000 acres. But they're spread out because you want to give them plenty of uh, room to, uh, to operate. We also had to make sure that we protected public health, protect the environment, protect wildlife. So we spent a huge amount of money and time working with local, state, and federal government to be sure that this does not affect the birds, bats, the wildlife, or the landowners in any public health ways. We tried to use best practices. And believe me, the people there, when we sit at, when we, to get 256 families to sign a 50-year easement takes at least three meetings with each one at each kitchen table. I like to think it's 50 cups of coffee per megawatt. <laughs> I mean, you, you go through these iterative, iterative questions again and again and again, and everyone has the right to ask every question you can 
And the more you ask, the better the, the whole project becomes. Communities these days are the only thing that is going to change this world, change it for the better. It's not going to be the state or the federal government that comes to their rescue. In fact, communities that rely too heavily on state and federal government get what they don't want all too often. Witness the other far end of Michigan and Detroit struggling to survive, struggling to figure out how to run a school that only graduates 30%. Why is that? It goes hand in glove with the, with the incredible disrepair to the city that's happened over, over centuries. Now we're hoping that one small ray of hope will be the Detroit Tigers. We, th we think Prince and some of those other fellows might just hit the ball this year. But back to Gratiot County, the Smith family wanted to keep their family farm the family farm. They'd gone through the crises. It's tough to make a living. And the average age, is, of course, is 55 years old on these farms. But they, the, the land is a family member. Just as you treasure Lake Superior, just as we all treasure our great lakes, and we need to protect them for future generations. We need to live a lifestyle. We need to create energy that doesn't have a negative impact on our farms or our great lakes. And I believe that wind power is one way to do that. And rather than spend a lot more time talking about it, I'm going to queue up a little video. Uh, this is the Marquette premiere of this little video done by a fellow named Ben Vanderveen, who graduated Northern Michigan in 2006, makes his home in Marquette. I'm sorry, now Portland, Oregon. And uh, Ben came up after we got things going, and he interviewed three people, a business person, a farmer, and a fellow who knows about e economic development. So I'm going to end my talk here and, and uh, cue the video, and I hope that we can focus together on how does a community grow, how can each one of us become part of that community by honestly talking about crises and creating collaboration and cooperation. Thank you. traffic in the restaurants and in the gas stations and the hair salons and uh, the, the homes for rent that aren't for rent now because they're full. Um, it's been a very positive uh, uh, situation for our small community. farmers, you know, they wanted, you know, what about this and what about that? Well, we come back, laid those out, and yep. tried, like I say, trying to make it fair for everybody. All in all, I think the projects went well. Um, hopefully it's received well and, and it'll help add, add to more phases to this whole project. I think it was that wide call to action and that inclusion while it was just a concept, which you know, really allowed people to come on board and right. participate and make it a successful endeavor. Right. And looking at it, um, when you try to get a grasp of the scope of things, you, you, you really realize what humans are capable of when they're faced with a challenge. You know, they, they can create something that amazing to provide the power of the future. I think that's just incredible.